I got into hip hop in a kind of roundabout way. I used to listen to a lot of um, shortwave radio back in the day, sitting in my room, and I heard the first couple of things that were funk records, and there was a particular sound to it that I liked. Um, from there, I heard about uh, Grandmaster Flash and those things from my cousin, who were just kind of casual listeners like me to this stuff. They liked the rap sound and whatever, just that one song. But um, I'd heard what I liked, and I went out search where I could find it. The radio was a thing at the time. Um, listened to it. Not the prominent radio stations. Um, like I'm saying, the shortwave ones, we had to search it. We get some of the jazz, get from the Fresh Prince or whatever on a Saturday or Sunday morning. And, but the books were available, the magazines were definitely available and I just absorbed all the info I could about um, my favourite artist at the time. Especially in the years when I started, I just started as a collector of vinyl. That's all I did. I was a fan. I was a total fan of, of the, the art form, of the music. and I just tried to purchase things that I liked. So whether it's a magazine, but uh, the vinyl aspect of things, people just saw me with a lot of vinyls, like Dean Turner, so I was a collector of vinyl, so he gave me a chance to play at uh, Gate of 3000, so I've, I've got to pick him up for that. Like Shamil X gave me a chance to, to DJ on the radio station, got to pick him up for that. Uh, another one is Arthur, from, who, who got me in at the base, the reopening of the base, Arthur Van Beek, got to pick him up on that. You know, people just gave me chances. They let me show if I could do it or not, but to, at that point I was to myself, I was a collector, I was not a DJ. But the more I played out, the more I, I, can, I can do this. Um, yes, we stole the eye, especially around the ADD, at, at the, 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 the beginning sec, um, part of, of the career. You would just watch the ADD and I thought, how's he doing that? Later on there was like uh, internet radio, those kind of things that had a few pointers of how you could learn how to sketch. And the way I learned was by ear. Like it wasn't video files at the time, it was audio files. So there was an explanation in text of how it sounds, then there was a download an audio clip and you listen to it and you try to mimic that audio clip. And that's what I did. Uh, Reddy D said, up to five hours a day you've got to practice. So I did that. I got a nice banged up little mixer and one a uh, direct drive turntable and five hours a day at the beginning, that's what I put into it. And a lot of the stuff I learned by mistake, by pure luck. I learned how to do things, but it's the dedication that you've got to show to, to anything you want in life. That same dedication that you put into turntablism, you've got to put that into your studies, but it's that determination. If the person is determined, they will learn. I was playing a lot of music that was, um, the content was very violent, you know, and I was not aware of it not consciously aware of it because I was more into the beats than listening to every single word that the rapper would say. And I remember there's this particular song by Cool J Rap that I played and it, was, it wasn't even from an album, it was just on a mixtape. And it was about um, abusing his partner, like beating down his partner. And I loved the beat and I played it and whatever and then someone brought my attention to the content of that, just the hook of it. And afterwards and I thought, Wow, how did I miss that? So it made me definitely more sensitive to the gender bashing that was happening in hip-hop. And once that switch went off, I was much more aware of the kind of song that I would start playing on the show, you know. Um, that definitely brought down the amount of songs that would, you know, be violent, either, you know, violence, black and black violence, whatever kind of violence, those kind of things started moving more into um, uh, different forms of expression within rap, so different styles, the left field styles, the guys from California, like Freestyle Fellowship, or you know, those guys were pushing the art, uh, instead of bringing that aggression only, you know. There's a love for words. I, mean, I was always drawn to poetry at school. Um, I could always understand what the poet was saying somehow. I wasn't really that much of an English buff you know, the comprehension and those things that I could apply myself, but it wasn't interesting to me. I was just more drawn to the poetry and then when I heard the rhythmical kind of poetry that was happening at the time and the more things started developing, like with, um, with Rakim, the, the, the kind of in and out rhyme structures that he had in his, it was incredible what he was doing. He was revolutionizing the, the, 
the art form at the time. All I knew it was like there's a, there's a bit of poetry in this. You know, people are not quick to um, dismiss rap. It's just like, yeah, they're just talking in codes or whatever. But some of the artists were definitely pushing the boundaries as far as using some poetic devices in their rhyming. And that, if you really listen to it, you know, with, I always love to listen to my music through earphones and you could really zoom in on the lyrics because everything else besides your, it was just, you know, quieted out. You could really zoom in on what he was saying. And sometimes you couldn't actually believe, like, did he really say that kind of thing? Because I mean, to a certain degree, I also took it like, yeah, that's rap. He won't be saying that. He's a guy from the street. Why would he be saying things like this? How would he be discussing astral travel or whatever? It can't be, you know? And then the documentaries came out and it's like, that's exactly what Rakim was talking about in 1987-1988. Dude was like 18 or 19 years old writing things on that level. It's like, no, there's no limits to this form of expression. It really is up to the individual who's, who's applying himself to this art form to where you can take it. It's limitless. Frustration is what started with our magazine. Frustration from a point of view of creativity for design. Uh, Natasha really wanted to do magazine layouts, do it the way she wanted to, and for, so forth for that perspective, that's one of the aspects that brought us to our magazine. Like I was saying to you, corporate work is not the most creative, colorful kind of things. Although it pays the money, it's not a creative art, it's not always a creative art. Two, so many young artists coming through the ranks that need to be heard, that people need to be made aware of. And because I said Cape Town is so fragmented, people can live in Cape Town and still not know about a Remy E or a Snarks O or something like that, you know? So it was a platform that we don't charge artists to, to get their stories in there. We'd sometimes go out and even do the photography for take two or three hours in Cape Town somewhere just to, to have the accompanying photographs to go with the layout and things. And we decided it was not going to be a cheap looking, you know, run at the mill kind of magazine. We thought, let's just push it to that level, even though there's no money um, that's being pushed in it. We don't make money out of it. But the response to it has been, has been phenomenal. I mean, some, some groups who are making money off hip hop got into contact with us. Uh, the minute I said there's no money, it was <laughs> the last email that we got. But at, at least the reaction is the right reaction we want from the magazine. It's, it's just how the hip hop artists should be portrayed. And once you see it, in the, the, the wish is that once you, s you hear about them in the, in the magazine, is that they know how to promote themselves and how to conduct themselves for further interviews with newspapers and you know radio and TV and those things. But it's just it's just a start. Like did you know about Remy? There's a website, there's a, a link to the music, there's those kind of things. So yeah, it's just love for, for the artists coming through and they struggle to be heard.